The summer of 2021 may well come to be remembered as the moment that, after decades of almost unrivaled dominance from Real Madrid and Barcelona, Atletico Madrid emerged as the strongest club in Spain. Not only did they secure their 11th La Liga title, but while Barca lost its greatest ever player amid a crippling financial crisis, and Real held back on spending for almost two entire summers in order to land Kylian Mbappe, losing their manager and selling a number of key assets in the process, Los Colchoneros have held on to their best players and added to their squad too. But in the midst of a global pandemic which has seen many of Europe's top clubs suffer huge losses, how have they been able to do this? On today's EFD Explained, we're going to find out. The first thing to note is that despite the stability on the field that Diego Simeone has brought to Atletico Madrid, the club has rarely been seen as particularly stable. Between 1987 and 2003, they were run by notorious politician and businessman Jesus Hill who earlier in his life had spent time in prison after an unsafe building he'd commissioned collapsed and killed 58 people. To say his time as Los Rocky Blancos president was chaotic is an understatement. The club got through 39 managers in 16 years, and Hill was even saying that sacking a coach is like having a beer. I could sack 20 in a year. He made similarly rash decisions with players. In his first two years as president, he sacked central midfielder and future Barcelona boss Kike Setien, for hanging out with raucous women, as well as three other players including Jesus Landa Buru, who was studying a degree in physics at the time and was deemed by Hill to be using his intelligence to turn teammates against him. Then in 1992, the same year in which he bought the previously fan-owned club, changing it into a public limited sports company, he shut down the academy, a move which resulted in teenage prodigy Raul moving to city rivals Real. In 2000, just four years after winning the league for the first time in almost 20 years, they were relegated for the first time in 70 years. And in 2003, Hill was given a three and a half year prison sentence, following an investigation into financial offences connected with his acquisition of the club at the start of the previous decade. He passed away the following year, leaving Atleti to his son Miguel Angel Hill Marin, who has been CEO since 1993, while his close ally Enrico Thoretto, who also held a stake in the club, had already taken over as president. This was despite both of them being implicated in the fraud case which had seen the late owner sentenced to prison. According to Jesus Martinez, a lawyer and member of the Sonales de Humo supporters group, since 2004 Atletico Madrid has been ruled by a guy who's in that position illegitimately, whilst Carlos Castrajena, a lawyer who had worked on two anti-corruption cases against the club ownership, accused the Hill family of systematic looting. And the shadow of Hill's father loomed large over the following decade. In 2011, the seaside city of Marbella, where Hill had been mayor for 15 years, became the centre of what the Independent described as the largest corruption trial in history, with Hill's children ordered to pay the town 100 million euros in compensation. Meanwhile, investigations into the nature of the club's ownership were still taking place as late as 2014. But what about the club's finances? Despite regaining La Liga status in 2002, Aleti didn't qualify for the Champions League again until 2008, and while the decades saw heroics from the likes of Fernando Torres, Diego Forlan and Sergio Aguero, it was also marred by a number of poor signings, from Matija Kesman to Florence Cinema Pongole, as well as mass fan protests against the ownership. Between 2008 and 2009, the club's budget dropped from €120 million Euros to €80 million, Euros, despite no significant outlays in the transfer market and the windfall from returning to the Champions League. At the end of 2011, Spanish publication AS estimated that the club owed €155 million Euros in tax, over €100 million Euros more than the next highest Barcelona. And according to a study by the Swiss Ramble, it was only as low as this because of all the money made from the sale of Sergio Aguero to Man City had gone straight to the tax authorities. The same study found that in the same year, the club's total debt stood at €514 million, Euros, second only to Barca and Real, whose huge revenues made up 80% of what they owed. Atleti, on the other hand, had generated just €100 million Euros in the 2010-11 campaign, accounting for just 19% of their debt, the worst showing among La Liga clubs whose financial records for that season were available. What's more, it was found that €52 million Euros of the debt was owed to club staff. When Javier Tebas introduced the strict spending regulations that helped reduce the debt of Spanish clubs, when he was appointed La Liga president two years later, Atletico Madrid's situation was no doubt one of the standout cases for doing so. When Diego Simeone was hired midway through the 2011-12 season, some saw it as an attempt to appease angry fans. After all, he was a well-loved former player, winning the League and Cup double with them in 1996 and returning for a two-year spell in 2003. And ten years later, he is the most decorated manager in the club's history, 
with two La Liga crowns, two Europa Leagues, two UEFA Super Cups and a Copa del Rey to his name. The redistribution of La Liga television money continued qualification for the Champions League and the greater commercial opportunities that came with success on the field saw Atleti's revenue skyrocket during the 2010s. In 2012-13, they generated just €120 million. Euros. Fast forward to 2018-19, and their annual turnover stood at €368 million. Euros. During this time, their commercial revenue rose from €40 million Euros to €100 million, Euros, while their gate receipts, which were already rising significantly before the move to the Wanda Metropolitano in 2017, rose from €28 million Euros to €59 million. Euros. In 2014, the year Simeone won his first La Liga and made his first Champions League final as manager, the club's wage bill stood at just €64 million. Euros. By 2019, this had risen to €242 million. Euros. In less than a decade, Atleti had gone from being a big club in a purely historical traditional sense to one of the biggest and most successful clubs of the 21st century. By 2015, Atleti was receiving outside investment, with Chinese conglomerate the Dalian Wonder Group purchasing a 20% stake in the club. They eventually sold their stake to Israeli billionaire Eden Offer, retaining their name on the club's new stadium. But this wasn't the end of Atleti's money worries. Stadium moves are almost always very costly and the club had to take out a €160 million Euro loan in order to finance the construction of the Wanda Metropolitano, with Hill Marin even calling it a big risk. They also began to take some big risks in the transfer market, spending €60 million Euros to bring back Diego Costa, who spent much of his time back at Madrid injured, and eventually terminated his contract in 2020. This was followed up by the €72 million Euro acquisition of Thomas Lamar, who despite experiencing a revival in the last 12 months still has some way to go to live up to that price tag. And then of course there is Jao Felix, who cost nearly €130 million, Euros, a long-term investment but also a risky one nonetheless. In his first two seasons in the Spanish capital, he failed to score as many league goals as he did in one campaign for Benfica. And the Jao Felix signing almost certainly wouldn't have been made had the Atleti hierarchy known what was around the corner. The global pandemic only shed further light on the debts the club had accumulated over the years, and in November 2020, Goal reported that they owed a total of €999 million. Euros. However, their revenue only dropped 10% to €331 million, Euros, while the club claimed to have actually posted a small profit for the 2019-20 season. Nevertheless, the club still needed help in order to be active in the 2021 summer transfer window. And they got it. In June, American investor Ara's management took a 34% stake in Atleti with the club receiving an injection of €182 million Euros in the process, in their words to reduce the level of indebtedness derived from both the investment in the new stadium and the acquisition of players. While the company cited the club's international brand equity, loyal fan base and resilience through the COVID-19 pandemic as the reason for investing. Subsequently, they were able to sign and register both Rodrigo de Paul and Mateus Cunha for a combined €65 million Euros and bring back Antoine Griezmann in an unlikely loan deal giving them even more strength to retain their La Liga title. What this means for the club's financial future remains to be seen, and some sections of the fanbase may hope it sees the influence of Hill Martin decrease in years to come. But as long as Simeone keeps delivering results, whatever happens behind the scenes will be a secondary concern to many. So guys, that was our EFD explained on where Atletico Madrid's money comes from. What did you guys think of it and what do you want to see us cover next on this strand? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button. It really does help us with the algorithm and I'll catch you next time.